May 2017, Mountain View, California, an auditorium packed with software developers falls silent as a senior Google engineer makes an announcement at the annual I.O. conference. Google is adding support for a new programming language on its Android platform, a language named Kotlin. For a beat, there's quiet. Then the crowd erupts into applause, the loudest cheer of the entire keynote. A programming language, named after a small island in the Gulf of Finland, has just stolen the show at one of tech's biggest stages. How did a language born in a far-off office become an overnight sensation among developers? To find out, we need to rewind nearly a decade to a candid conversation in St. Petersburg, Russia. 2010, St. Petersburg, inside the offices of JetBrains, co-founder Sergei Dmitriev poses a simple but ambitious question. What big thing can JetBrains do to benefit the developer community? The company had built a reputation creating tools like IntelliJ IDEA, supporting languages developed by others. Now, Dmitriev challenged his team to make something of their own. Engineer Dmitry Jemerov had an idea. The ultimate thing a development company can do for developers is a programming language. The room laughed. A new language for the JVM, competing with the likes of Scala. Even Andrei Brislav, who would go on to lead the project, initially pushed back. Don't do it, just use Scala, you'll be fine. But the more they talked, the more a gap revealed itself. Scala was powerful, yes, but complex, slow to compile, and sometimes too clever for its own good. JetBrains, with years of experience building tools for dozens of languages, was uniquely positioned to synthesize the best ideas into something usable and elegant. The laughter faded, the idea stuck, and within months, JetBrains quietly began work on a new language. The first commit landed on November 8, 2010. Internally, they called it Project Kotlin, named after an island near St. Petersburg. The name echoed a tradition. Java after the Indonesian island, Ceylon from Sri Lanka. But Kotlin was theirs. Personal, local, distinct. Originally, the team considered calling it Jet, a nod to JetBrains. But trademark concerns forced a rethink. After dozens of rejected ideas, Kotlin stuck. A simple name tied to home. From the start, the goals were clear. Compile as fast as Java, interoperate fully with existing Java code, reduce boilerplate, eliminate common bugs like null pointer exceptions, be expressive but readable. In July 2011, they introduced Kotlin to the public at the JVM Language Summit in California. It wasn't just a presentation, it was a statement. This is what a pragmatic JVM language can look like. In 2012, they open sourced the project under Apache 2.0. The message was clear, Kotlin belongs to the community. JetBrains hoped developers would adopt it, and if they did, maybe they'd use JetBrains IDEs too. It was a strategic bet. But more than strategy, it was a conversation. The team began listening closely to early users. Bug reports, feature requests, critiques. These shaped Kotlin's evolution. Over time, it gained powerful tools. Now safety to eliminate crashes, extension functions to enhance readability, coroutines to simplify asynchronous code. But while Kotlin was removing boilerplate, developers today are running into something messier. AI-generated code that just didn't work or meet their expectations. Your hairline deserves a better AI agent. They said AI would write our apps. So we asked, build a checkout page, add login, handle payments. And what did we get? A broken form. Buttons that look fine, but don't respond. A flow that dies at step two. So we did what everyone does, regenerate. Using cursor to press command plus K. Then again, and again. This wasn't automation, it was guesswork disguised as productivity. That's when we tried something different. Test Sprite MCP. It's an AI testing agent developed by ex-Google and Amazon engineers, and it's designed to test AI-generated code, not just lint it. Upload your repo, drop in a rough spec. Test Sprite generates a full test plan, runs both front-end and back-end checks, finds what's missing, and loops fixes through your coding AI until everything runs. No babysitting, no rewrites, no guessing. Users say it saves up to 90% of testing time and increases AI agent code accuracy from 43% to over 90%. And you can try it for free. Just visit testsprite.com or check the link in the description. The ecosystem matured, the language grew, and then in February 2016, JetBrains released Kotlin 1.0, declaring it stable, production ready, and committed to long-term backward compatibility. Still, Kotlin was a new language in a world dominated by Java. Something, someone would need to shift that balance. Behind the scenes, Android developers had started experimenting with Kotlin. Its cleaner syntax, safer type system, and concise expressiveness offered a welcome break from Java's verbosity. But without Google's blessing, it remained a quiet movement until May 2017. 
On stage at Google I.O., the announcement landed like a thunderclap. Kotlin is now an officially supported language for Android development. The crowd roared. TechCrunch later called it the loudest applause of the keynote. The Android world had been waiting, and Google had delivered. Why the excitement? Because Kotlin addressed real pain. Fewer crashes from null pointers, less boilerplate, easier to read code, seamless use alongside Java. Crucially, it wasn't a replacement, it was an enhancement. Developers could adopt Kotlin gradually within existing code bases. Migration wasn't a leap, it was a slide. And it wasn't just symbolic. Android Studio, Google's official IDE, was built on JetBrains IntelliJ. The connection was direct. Kotlin was baked into version 3 of Android Studio. Google and JetBrains even co-founded the Kotlin Foundation to steer the language's future. Adoption surged. By 2019, Google named Kotlin its preferred language for Android apps. By 2021, Kotlin was powering roughly 80% of apps on the average Android phone. Almost overnight, Kotlin became a default. But Android was never the end game. From the beginning, Kotlin aimed to be cross-platform. JetBrains expanded its reach. Kotlin JS enabled web development. Kotlin native compiled to iOS, Windows, and Linux. Kotlin multi-platform let developers share code across mobile, server, and web. Under new project lead Roma Lizarov, Kotlin's ambitions grew bolder. His vision? A complete multi-platform ecosystem, language, libraries, and tools, spanning data science, cloud, gaming, and more. To support that, the team began rebuilding Kotlin's compiler from the ground up. K2, faster, more powerful, more scalable. What started as a language was evolving into an infrastructure, a foundation, a way to think across boundaries. In 2010, Survey Dimitriev asked a room of developers what JetBrains could do to make an impact. The answer sounded absurd, too ambitious, out of reach. But they tried anyway. They built a language they wanted to use. They shared it, listened, refined, and waited. Seven years later, that language drew cheers at Google I.O. Eleven years later, it ran on millions of devices. And today it's still growing, with new compilers, new platforms, and new developers discovering Kotlin every day. Not because someone marketed it, but because someone made it matter.